Batik Girl, a tale about family, grief and acceptance, has been making its presence felt at film festivals around the world and gaining a long list of accolades in the process. The idea of the animated short film was born in 2017 while writer Heidi Shamsuddin and director Irwan Junaidi were attending a book festival in Italy. So in 2017, uh, Irwan and I were at the Bologna Children's Book Fair and uh, we came across this concept of a silent book. And then at the same time, uh, we were at the Malaysian booth and um, it's decorated in the Malaysian way. So there, were batik, uh, there was a batik, a very nice batik tablecloth and people kept coming to have a look. They were very much attracted to the batik and we thought, you know, there's something about batik which just... Um, which is quite special, which people are attracted to. So these two things sort of combined together and sparked our imagination. Uh, and I think that was sort of the catalyst of how, how this project started. Batik wasn't on my radar at all. Batik was something I take things, you know, I take for granted. It was something my grandmother used to wear when you know, she takes a shower. But it took me going abroad to Italy to see that actually people appreciate batik and that set me down the road of actually doing more research. That was the catalyst for me to say, hey, you know, it's, this is something that was like, you know, okay, culture is actually important. Produced by R&D Studio, the whole production took a year with eight months on story development and pre-production and another four on animation production. Heidi says the concept was to explain to children about death and bereavement in a beautiful way. So we decided to create um, symmetry, a reflection. So you have, in the film, we have a real world and we have the batik world. You have Mas in the real world and then you have batik girl and then you have uh, her grandmother Tokma. And in the batik world, we have this creature um, made of wax called Shadow. So you, we needed th you need those two characters in those two different worlds to complete each other. So uh, in the beginning when um, Batik Girl wakes up in the Batik world, her world is blank and white. But as she moves through the tapestry, she puts colour into the world. But that colour, there's always a danger that that colour will spread and turn messy because you don't have that wax outline that you get when, you, when you're painting batik. You can see it in the film, actually, if you look carefully. Batik girl is you know, going around the world, in, in the batik world, and she's coloring it. And then when shadow follows her, you can see this thin layer of gold wax that appears in the film. And um, that's, I think that's deeply meaningful and, and quite beautiful, um, that symbolism, because it shows that um, you need these two elements, just like Mas and uh, needs her grandmother to, to sort of um, get over her bereavement. This film is a, a way to kind of explore that concept of loss and bereavement in a, in a beautiful way, in an artistic way. Um, and that's how, that's why we sort of put those two elements together. The wax and colour were not the only symbolisms the team planted in the film. According to Irwan, there are about 100 symbolisms, but viewers can come up with their own interpretation. I think yeah, one of the I think is most obvious motive is circles. We have a lot of circles in the, in the, in the show, in the film. So we started one of the opening scenes is a mask drawing in the sand, a circle, and you know, that's the family thing, that, that sand drawing. We have circles when we have that shot where the parents passed away. It was a white shot at the, at the Kobo, at the grave. And uh, you know, there's a circle there as well. So that's, that motif is repeated. And what I wanted to say is, it's the circle of life, actually. The red cloth is, uh, we wanted it to be symbolic because Mars was, she wants to escape. She wants to, you know, run away from whatever troubles uh, she is in. And that cloth comes to her and it led her to the workshop, which led her to the Bate world, which led her to the realisation that, you know, the grandmother is there for her. Heidi says the beauty about a silent film is that it gives the audience room and creativity to interpret the story in their own way. 
if you you can watch it hundreds of times and pick up different things. So it's fascinating in that way. You know, every time you watch it, you can you'll have a, a new experience. And in order to depict Batek as accurate as possible, the team chose to produce the film in 2D because of the traditional drawing method. So we wanted the show to be authentic and be true to Batek itself. Uh, when you do 2D, it's a lot of drawing, so it's a manual uh, skill. And when you do 3D, it's through the computer, when you, rig, you, you model the, the models and then you rig it and then you animate it. So uh, there is more of like the human flaws can be seen in 2D. That is reflected in Batik itself because in Batik, there's no control set, control undo, you know, that you have to do it once. So there's always different thickness in the lines, there's always wax dropping on the cloth. So that things which are not perfect is, you know, what we wanted it to be in the show. One of the challenges in producing a 2D film is to give depth to the scene. The first challenge was designing it because it's not been done before, so our artist, uh, Atika, designed different parts of uh, the Bate world and you know we did it many many times so I think you know uh, the sea portion of the Bate world was uh, she nailed it pretty fast but when we did the jungle version I think she did like 10 different versions before un until we actually were happy with that kind of visual look so once we had that look then we had to animate and animating the Bate world we had to go back to Bate itself for example, there's a motif in Batik called Daun Menjala, Creeping Vines. And we thought Creeping Vines, they will move like snakes. So we could animate that static motif into an animated uh, Creeping Vine uh, sort of thing inside the Batik world. Despite the many long nights and hurdles, Heidi is happy that she's able to share Batik Girl and our culture with people around the world. Um, I'm very excited and happy that uh, Batik Girl has um, gone this far. Uh, it was unexpected really because it's such a small project for us, uh, such a labour of love. The, the international awards and recognitions are very nice, but the fact that people have sent us messages from around the world telling, telling us that this film resonated with them, that, that's quite special. While thrilled with the attention given to the film, Irwan also hopes to see other studios step up their game and lift the animation standard in Malaysia.